Did you know that in Microsoft 365, you can configure all your user settings for Microsoft Office absolutely free on any device and you don't need Intune, you don't need group policy. How is this achieved? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Hello everyone, great to see you. Andy Malone, uh, Microsoft MVP. First of all, a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel during 2024. I can't tell you, I really do appreciate it. Um, 2025 looks like it's gonna be super exciting with loads of new features, loads of new information coming uh, out of Microsoft. And I endeavor to keep you, as always, up to date. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to come and join me. So you know what to do. Click on that subscribe button up there and ring that bell and come and join us. And if you've got questions and comments about this, or in fact, any of my videos, as always, get that down at below. Now, today's video is sponsored by Sprocket365, and I'll give you a little bit more details on them later on. So group policy in Microsoft 365. Wait a minute, Andy, there is no group policy in Microsoft 365. Ah, but there is. And Microsoft call it the cloud policy service for Microsoft 365. And as I said, I've got a little presentation for you, which will give you all the technical details. And then I'm going to show you a demo. All right. So stay tuned. This is a good one. So let's take a look at the cloud policy service for Microsoft 365. As I said, I've just got a little explainer for you, first of all. So first of all, it's part of Microsoft 365 uh, and it's in the apps admin center, as you'll see in a moment. It enforces policy settings for all Microsoft 365 apps, including Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, and so on. It doesn't rely on uh, group policy, so it doesn't need to be Active Directory joined, and it doesn't even need to have an Entra ID account either. So does that mean that I can enforce this for guests, Andy? Absolutely you can. Please note when the user signs in, um, the policy is then applied to the user settings in the registry on the user's device. Whether this be an Android, whether it be an iOS device, whether it be a Windows device, it all works in a similar way. You can enforce some policy settings for the web as well. So Office for the web and also Microsoft Loop. Um, this enforces, as I said, for both guests and signed in users at the same time. Um, it includes many of the user based settings that you traditionally might find in group policy. So in terms of licensing uh, and also admin roles, first of all, the admin roles that you need are the cloud apps administrator, the security administrator and the global admin. They're the three core roles. Um, please note there are limited access for a global reader, but it doesn't support some features, things like cloud update or modern app settings either. In terms of licensing, you'll be glad to know that it supports the education, business, enterprise and government plans, including small business standard, small business premium, the E3 and E5 plans. Uh, in addition, it also controls settings, as I said, for Microsoft 365 apps, as well as some supported versions of Microsoft 10 and 11. So certain versions of Windows, um, as well as su supported versions of Windows Server as well that also support Microsoft 365 apps. These tend to be the more up-to-date versions like Windows Server 2022 and of course 2025. Um, in terms of endpoint requirements, so when you configure your DNS settings, if you uh, include these DNS settings um, in your uh, DNS files, then you will be able to access these. So how are the policies applied? Well, it uses the click to run service for Microsoft Apps Enterprise, and it checks with the cloud policy service on a regular basis. So essentially, if there are, are a, if there is a policy for a user, 
the uh, the policy is then applied and it will then take effect the next time the user logs off or shuts down office and then restarts office or at appropriate app such as word or excel um, again, the policies are applied from the cloud policy service rather than group policy or Microsoft Intune. So as I said, the behavior is almost identical to group policy that you would traditionally find in Windows Server. Um, as I said, for Windows devices, they're enforced based on the primary user that assi is assigned for that machine that's using Windows Enterprise. However, there are uh, circumstances where multi-user accounts can also be supported as well. And again, I've detailed that here. So some policies related to privacy controls will be applied immediately without the user having to restart the apps itself. Uh, if a user is located in a nested group, so it supports security groups here, folks, um, then the user in the nested groups will receive the policies. The nested groups and the users in those nested groups must be created or synchronized into Microsoft Entra ID. So yes, it does also support hybrid as well. The check-in interval is controlled by the, the cloud policy service. Uh, and it's communicated to click to run during each check-in call. Typically, this is a non-configurable feature. Now, what about things like Microsoft Purview? So for compliance, um, you'll be glad to know that it fully integrates with uh, Microsoft Purview solutions, in especially things like the auditing solutions. Um, you can use either the portal or you can use the PowerShell feature uh, for this. Uh, just a few things to note. Only user policy-based settings are available here. Computer-based policy settings aren't available because that computer has to be either managed in Intune or those settings would typically come from group policy. Also, please note that you don't need to download any associated admin templates, things like ADMX templates, ADML templates that you would traditionally use with group policy. Uh, you can also create the configuration or the policy configurations to apply the settings to supported versions of desktop apps uh, that come with the subscription plans of Project and Visio as well. Um, the health status feature was retired, by the way, in 2022, and Microsoft are currently working on a new feature. All right, so without any further ado, let's jump in then and have a look at this cool feature, the Cloud Policy Service for Microsoft 365. Today's video is sponsored by Sprocket 365. Finally, create a robust knowledge base in SharePoint. For more details, visit them today at sprocket365.com. Okay, so now we know a little bit about the technology. Let's jump in and have a look at how it works. So I'm kicking off here in the 365 Admin Center. And one of the first things you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to want to come into uh, groups. So uh, I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a security group and I'm going to create this security group or London Office Users. I'm going to click next and at this point it's saying do you want to assign an uh, Entra Azure, I wish Microsoft would change this, uh, Entra AD uh, role. Um, in this case it's just for users, I'm going to say no. Now, within the group, I'm going to say, OK, let's just uh, create this group. And now it's asking me, do I want to add in another security group? Now, you can nest so you can have a group within a group. Now, it's recommended that you go no deeper than three groups here. So just to be aware. But in this case, I don't want to go and create another group. So I'm going to scroll down and as you can see, I have now created the London Office users. Now I'm going to add in a group owner. And in this case, I'm going to bring myself in as the owner. So I'm just going to say, yeah, just bring in CDX, for example. And there I am. 
I'm just going to add myself in as the group owner here. So once you've done that, um, I'm just going to flip back and I'm going to click into the members tab. Now for this type of group, you can have both users and devices. Now, normally, if I was talking about Microsoft Intune, I would I would have actually said that you can have users or devices. But in this case, I'm deploying Microsoft Office and you can deploy either using the Office customization tool or you can deploy it through the uh, Microsoft um, Office policies for Microsoft 365, which is what we're looking at. So I'm going to add some members and for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to add in just some of my users here. Okay, so once you've brought in your three users, as I mentioned, you can also bring in devices as well if you want to. So I'm just going to close that down and next I'm going to come in uh, to the admin center. I'm going to come into all admin centers and from here, we're going to want to go into the office configuration. So here we have the office customization tool or tools. And as you can see, we have two. You've got office policies and you've also got device configuration. And you can also find them here in the customization menu as well. So device configuration, the idea of this particular tool is it's perfect if you have an on-premises infrastructure. So if you're already, for example, either in hybrid or you've got Active Directory on-premises, uh, the idea here is that you can go into what we call the Office Customization Tool. And the Office Customization Tool can be used to create a custom architecture. So you can choose, I, I want to deploy either 32-bit or 64-bit versions. You can't combine them both. So you need to do one for your 32-bit machines and 64-bit machines. And of course, we're talking about Windows here. Um, you would then select the uh, suite, so the version of Microsoft Office that you want to configure. So for example, if I said apps for enterprise, uh, you would then select, basically going through here, selecting the products that you want to either include or uh, switch off. You would then choose the language settings. You would then choose the updates, whether you want to force an upgrade. Um, and essentially you would choose all the settings that you want. But the key thing that you can see here is that it's creating what we call an answer file. And this answer file is in XML format. So that XML format, you would then use locally. You would have a downloaded copy of Microsoft Office and you would use the setup command and it would then pull the answers from this answer file. And for more details on this, make sure that you see the documentation on learn.microsoft.com. So that essentially is what the device configuration does. It's not about managing devices. If you want to manage devices, you need to do that, of course, in Intune. So what is super clever, though, is policy management here. So policy management is for Microsoft Office for user settings. And essentially what we can do is we can create a new policy. So I'm going to create a new policy here and I'm going to call this my London Office policy. OK, uh, you can put in a little description in there if you want to. And again, I'm just going to click next. And first of all, it says, is this policy for all users? Now, I'm not a fan of this because if you made a mistake here, it's really difficult to kind of pull it back. So I recommend using the groups. The alternate one here is the configuration applies to users that access documents anonymously over the web. So that could be, for example, guest users. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to add in a user or a group here. So you can either do this for individual users or in this case, I'm adding in my London office group that I created earlier. So now we go next. And at this point, it's saying, OK, which product or products 
do you want to configure? Now, it looks a little bit scary here, doesn't it? But what you can do here is you can easily whittle this down by simply typing in the product that you're looking for. So for example, I might be looking for word policies here. All right, so um, the next thing then is, uh, for example, a policy here. So it says, do you want to allow the storage of passwords? And you can see that this essentially represents the user's group of policy settings that a traditional admin would have had to configure in Active Directory. So now I can switch this on here and this will apply that setting ne the next time that the user signs in. So I can choose these settings. Do you want to uh, disable password to UI? Do I want to put any in, uh, restrictions? Do I want to set up an encryption type? Uh, prevent Word and Excel from loading manage code extensions. Okay, so I might, for example, want that. So once you've gone through the various settings here, you simply click on next and then you review it. And ultimately, then I'll just go ahead and click on create. And once it's done, you can now see that this policy has been set up and the scope is for your users. So now what will happen is the next time that user logs on and opens Microsoft Word, these settings will then be applied. Now, while we're in here, the other thing that you've also got, you can also monitor the app's health here as well. Now, I mentioned that you also have an inventory. So this tool supports both 365 as well as hybrid uh, deployments. You can learn more. There is some great documentation here. So you can see it takes you through to the uh, apps. This is the, um, the uh, documentation that I was going to show you anyway, but you can see you can easily get into it. And more than that, we also have a whole bunch of training videos here as well that you can uh, watch and it will take you through the whole thing. There is absolutely tons of stuff there that will help. So definitely, if you've not checked this out, definitely go out and have a go at setting up these different configurations. And it really is that easy, folks. It really is. So other than the health, you've also got an inventory of devices there as well. Uh, and you've also got brand new, actually, is you can also get an overview of your updates. So if you're using Microsoft's cloud update service, you can get a look at that there. So there you go, just a whistle-stop tour uh, of the uh, app's admin center and how you can create customized policies super easy for Microsoft 365. So yeah. here you have it, the cloud policy service, which comes part of Microsoft 365. Come on now, admit it. I bet you didn't even know it was there. Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed it. Give me a big thumbs up if you did. And again, questions and comments, as always, get those down below. You have a fantastic new year and I'll see you after the holidays. All the best. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.